to another Wednesday morning time of getting into God's Word. And, and uh, I wanted to start by saying, you know, I, I so love, so love the outdoors. And I love being in a place where, where there are mountains all around me or, or there are rivers. And I love the rivers. And I, I love the fish in the rivers. Go figure. And, uh, you know, there's so many beautiful things around. And then I get to a verse like we're going to look at here this morning. And I'm like, huh? Well, let me get go to there right now. First John chapter two, verses 15 to 17. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. Now, now let me stop there for just a second. Like really, really God, do not love the world. Do, like you've made such an incredible planet. You've done everything so very well. You said it was very good. And you're telling me I'm not supposed to love that. Well, well let's go on from there. It says, going on, it says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For everything in the world, the craving of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Folks, there is a love that God absolutely hates. And it is a love for a, things in this world that are contrary to him. And I want to look at that here this, this morning with you. Why, why does God hate this type of love, of the love for the world? Well, let me explain that to you here this morning. First of all, he hates the love for the world because, first of all, because of what the world is. Now, just to be clear, there are there's at least three different kind of concepts Concept when it comes to the world. There is what I talked about earlier. There is a fact of the beautiful planet that God has made and, and the rivers and the mountains and all the gorgeous stuff that we see around us. The second thing about the world is the people, the people of the world. And so when we look at John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, for God so loved the what? The world. So obviously he he can't hate and love the world at the same time. Well, this, the world that he loves there are the people that are of the world. But the third concept of the world is what we are looking at here this morning. And that is the concept of all the evilness of the world that is around us. The, the, the enemy of God is this, this spirituality that is in the world that is not, not something that God wants for us at all. See, we use the word world to to talk about a system, don't we? So we, if we go to the sports network and we turn on sports network, you're going to hear some announcers say, and today in the world of sports, now, now to be clear, there isn't a planet, there isn't a certain place or country that is called sports country or sports planet. Of course not. It's the system. It's the whole concept. And that's what he's talking about. And the system that, that God is so very much against is Satan's system that is in rebellion against God and his rule. See, Jesus calls Satan the prince of the world, doesn't he? If you look in John chapter 12, verse 31, he calls him that. And as, as followers of of Jesus, we are we're to love the planet, we are loved to love mankind, but we are not to allow this system in this world to take us away from the things of God. And boy, boy, there's so many things there, isn't there, that will try to remove us from his presence. So we need to guard against that world system. Why does God hate the love of the world? Secondly, because of what the world does. Verse 16 says, For everything in the world, the craving of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. Someone said worldliness is not so much a, a, a matter of activity, but a matter of attitude. It's what's deep down inside of our heart. See, we can choose not to go to certain places and uh, not to do certain things that are wrong and we feel we're doing right. But deep down inside, we may still have a desire to do things that are contrary, a worldly desire. He talks about the craving of sinful man, craving after things that are con contrary to God. He talks about the lust of the flesh. He talks about boasting or being arrogant and proud for what we have and who we are. There are things that are that are evil, but there are also systems we have to guard against that may take us away from the from the love of Christ, that may take us away from God. 
And that's what he's talking about here. You know, years ago, Michelle and I, we were dating years ago. I know it's way back, just just the time after Noah. And uh, we were dating and and I just, I just so wanted to be with Michelle. And I spent so much time with her that I started to get a prick in my conscience. <laughs> And Michelle moved down to, to Brazil. And, and during that time, I felt so strongly that God wanted me to put my priorities right. They weren't right at that time. And she was priority above God. And it, I had to, we had to break up for a period of time so that I could get my priorities right and get back to where I was supposed to be. And then I was able to spend the time with her. See, there are good things that may be around you or in your life that may pull you away from God. Not just the lust, not just the worldly pleasures that, that uh, John is talking about here, but other things. So he says, we God hates the love of the world because of what the world does to us, how it draws us away from him. And thirdly, God hates the love of the world because he knows, he knows where the world is going. Verse 17 says, the world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Listen, this world is not permanent. <laughs> one thing we know is permanent, and one thing we know for sure is that this world will pass away. That, that fact is, is a reality that we can hold on to. We know that for a fact. And one day, all the systems, all the, the pleasures, all the stuff that people are hanging on to in this world that are contrary to God will, in fact, pass away. And what, what will last? The only thing that will last is that which is within the will of God. The only thing that will last, he says here, is, is the one that does the will of God. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, when you think about us as individuals, I'm wondering how will you re be remembered? I, I'm wondering also how many people are remembered, let's say 100 years down the road. It's interesting, in, in some readings that I was doing, I, I, found, I found something very, very interesting. It's the truth that less than 2,000 people in all the people of history, think about it, less than 2,000 will be remembered for, by more than just a few people for more than just a century for more than just 100 years, less than 2,000. Crazy, uh huh? Most people will be forgotten. Most things will be forgotten. And what God is saying here is that, listen, things will pass away. This world will pass away. Individuals will pass away. But what you do for God, what you do for eternity, your life in His hands, that will last forever. So I ask you, what do you love? <laughs> How much do you love God? How much are you committed to Him? Are you being are you being sidetracked by things in this world? Or are you so committed to the Lord that yeah, we live on this planet. Yes, we are we are engulfed with, with all sorts of worldly stuff, but can we maintain focus on the truth of God through all of it? Father, I thank you for your people today. I thank you that we have a eternal hope. And Lord, we know that the enemy and that system of evil tries to crush that hope, tries to get us off focus, and tries to get us, Lord, away from where we should be with you. I pray in Jesus' name, help us to love you. Help us to hate what you hate. Help us not to be consumed with a worldly system that is, that is antagonistic to the things of God. And Lord, help us to be consumed deeply in love with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for today. I pray blessing on your people in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining me again this morning. I pray God blesses you. I pray you have a great next to this rest of this week. And please come on and join us on Sunday as we worship the Lord together. We'll see you then. Thank you.